Welcome into the Bowl Championship Series Playoff Selection Show. This is something I've been doing personally for the last couple of years on my own time. Kind of like the What If series a little bit. What if college football had a gigantic playoff system? What if we didn't do all these FCS games and the regular season was only 10 or 11 games and it opened the door for like what the F? CS does with a gigantic 24 team playoff. Well, we're going to see through simulation what would happen if we've had a college football playoff. I'll put links in the description so you can see what I've been doing the last couple of years. But we're going to take a look at the selection show and my personal vision. This is how I believe the playoff system should go down. I've set it up so that the polls still matter, the bowl games still matter, the bowl games are of importance, the voting, where you're ranked in the top 25 is important. You still have the pollsters, you still have the BCS polls, you still have the bowl games, but it's with an added playoff dimension. So I've combined all three things into one to do this personal college football playoff and uh, how I'm going to do it this year, I'm still going to use NCAA 12. I'm not, I've looked at some videos on YouTube, I've looked at reviews, and I just do not like what I see out of NCAA 13. It looks like a very glitchy game. So I'm going to stick with 12, but what I'm going to do is go into Team Builder on NCAA 12 and create the teams using the templates in the games for the different teams and just go in, change the rosters, and change the rankings around with how I believe that the, you know, they would be. I'm going to, you know, go and find some rankings from 13 and put them into 12. So while I am going to be using 12, I will be getting the correct rosters and the correct ratings and everything. So it shouldn't affect it all that much. And uh, I'm going to be using uh, rosters from Rivals.com. They have depth charts on there. I know some haven't been updated as frequently as they should. So if you can offer any help or any solution how to get more updated rosters, go ahead and let me know. But I'm going to be using Rivals.com. If they're not 100% accurate, I'll apologize right now, but you know what? It's just video games. It's nothing to get upset about or worked up if the rosters aren't 100% correct. I will do my best. I'm only one person here, and I'm just doing this for fun to see what would happen if we had a playoff system, an extended playoff system in college football. This is just my own personal vision and just something for fun, and that's how everyone should take it. So using NCAA 12, I'll rebuild all 40 teams in Team Builder, and I'll get the hopefully the correct rosters and rankings down. So let's take a look how how this thing works. In my playoff system rankings, the top 25 is so important. You'll see it here. These are your first-round bowl games, all 16 of them, and you'll see in a moment why being ranked high is so important. The teams that finished highest rank get first pick at these bowl games and can pick the games close to home. So if you're ranked number one and you keep winning out, you get the first choice of your first round bowl game. In round two, you get your for first choice of second round bowl game, which you see here. These are the second round games. And you have that opportunity to pick the games closest to home, like Stanford. I think the last couple years played all their bowl games in the state of California. They had the home field advantage. The fans got to travel. The Stanford team themselves were less tired because they had less travel. And that's why the in my system, the rankings, the top 25 is so important. And here is your NIT, something I created. Uh, the dates aren't right on that. I apologize for that. It should be 2012, 2013. But this is just because I had some extra bowls left over, and uh, I wanted to get them involved. So I decided to let's have a little mini NIT tournament where the reward is a trip to Hawaii, which I think is pretty cool. So here's how it works. The top 40 in the BCS playoff, it breaks down like this. The top 25 teams are the top 25 in the BCS. I feel if you're good enough to be ranked in the top 25, you're good enough to be a national champion. How you find teams number 26 through 32, those are picked by adding the total number of votes a team gets in the USA Today and AP poll, with the highest number of votes getting spot 26, next highest getting 27, and downward. If you're an unranked conference champion, you automatically get a berth to the BCS playoffs. So, you will get those final spots in the tournament. Here are the uh, tiebreakers to figure out if there's more than one unranked conference champion who gets the highest spot. You go by record first, 
whoever has the highest record. If that's tied, you go to whoever wins the head-to-head. If that's tied, you go to the conference record. After that non-conference record and after that point differential, how many points you scored based on how many points you have given up. The teams that get bumped out of the BCS playoffs by an unranked conference champion get moved down to the eight-team NIT. This is why it's so important to stay as high-ranked as you can, and this is why the rankings matter, so you don't get bumped out by an unranked conference champion. For example, you'll see that happen this year. So you win your conference, you automatically get into the playoffs, but if you're down ranked low, you'll get bumped out by a conference champion. Here is your BCS top 25, your BCS rankings. You see on the screen. Notre Dame 1, Alabama 2, Florida, Oregon, Kansas State, Stanford, Georgia, LSU, Texas A&M, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Florida State, Oregon State, Clemson, Northern Illinois, Nebraska, UCLA, Michigan. Boy, well, you saw the rest. Here are your BCS at-large teams. These are your unranked bubble teams. And here's how they got the votes according to the AP and USA Today. Wisconsin, they would have gotten in automatically because they're the Big Ten champions, but because they received 177 votes, they'll get spot number 26. Moving down the line, Vanderbilt with 142, they're going to get spot 27. Cincinnati gets number 28. Fresno State will be your 29th ranked team based on their votes. San Diego State will be 30. Tulsa will be number 31. And here's where things get interesting. Rutgers is ranked 33. And Arkansas State, or uh, Rutgers had uh, 35 votes, Arkansas State 33. What's going to happen here, though, is because Arkansas State is a conference champion, they automatically get a berth to the BCS, so they will get into the BCS with the number 32 seed, while Rutgers will get bumped out to the NIT. They were the inaugural NIT champs last year, and they will now look to repeat. Disappointed, but you know what? They had their opportunity on the football field when they played Louisville to win the unofficial Big East title, and they lost that game. So that kind of burned them and took them out of the bowl championship series playoffs. So see, I feel like more games count in the bowl championship series playoffs. You can take a look at it again. Arkansas State will bump out Rutgers, but now we got to look at our NIT teams. Rutgers will obviously get the number one seed because they got bumped down. Oklahoma State, Baylor, TCU, USC, Mississippi State, Arizona State, and Louisiana Tech based on tiebreakers. They will be your eight teams in the mini NIT tournament, kind of like a secondary tournament to reward these teams for a great season and to allow them to go to a bowl game and possibly make it all the way to Hawaii. So you see your NIT list on the screen. And now coming up, we are going to see what the matchups are in the BCS playoffs and what bowls. It's going to be Notre Dame, number one, getting the Sun Belt champ in the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl. Notre Dame got their first pick of a bowl game, and they wanted the bowl game in Detroit. I believe it's about a two-hour drive from South Bend, Indiana to Detroit, so that was the best destination for them. Number one versus number 32, Arc State came close to knocking off Oklahoma State last season, so look out for the Red Wolves, even though they're going to be without their head coach, Gus Malzahn. He has taken off for the Auburn job. Alabama gets Tulsa, number one versus number 32, and for the second year in a row, Alabama gets the GoDaddy Bowl in Mobile. Last year, they defeated Northern Illinois in the GoDaddy.com Bowl, so they'll have home field advantage in that game. The Florida Gators at number three, they get number 30, San Diego State in the Russell Athletic Bowl in Orlando, so the Gators as a reward for being the number three seed. They won't have to travel far at all. They only have to go down the road to Orlando where San Diego State's got to go across the country. And again, just going to show you how important it is to be that high ranked up because the travel can hurt you and help you depending on your ranking. Number four, Oregon. They're going to take the Craft Fight Hunger Bowl in San Francisco, which gives a home state advantage to Fresno State. So we'll see how this one works out. As the Bulldogs, I believe, 
You can go look and correct me if I'm wrong on the Facebook page. I believe this is the first ever bowl game or bowl championship series playoff game for the Fresno State Bulldogs. Coming in at number five, Kansas State will select the Armed Forces Bowl at the campus of TCU, so a short travel for them. They get the Cincinnati Bearcats, who made a pretty good run last season. They defeated the Bearcats, did the Arkansas Razorbacks in double overtime in the Music City Bowl. Up next, the Stanford Cardinal, they get the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl by choice. That's in San Diego, so a home state bowl for them. While Vanderbilt's got to go from Nashville all the way to California for this game. So advantage for the Stanford Cardinal. They made it to the national title game last year before losing on a last moment play to the Alabama Crimson Tide. Georgia up next at number seven. They're going to take the Belk Bowl in North Carolina for Forcing the uh, Big Ten chance on a long travel. It's eight and five, the worst record this season of any BCS playoff team, but they automatically get in by being a conference champion. So it'll be Wisconsin and Georgia in the Belk Bowl. For the third year in a row, LSU gets the New Orleans Bowl. That stadium, the Superdome, has been sold out every year for the New Orleans Bowl with LSU in it. Maybe uh, we can take some notes here, New Orleans Bowl. They're going to get Kent State, kind of a Cinderella story, almost winning the MAC championship, but their number 25 ranking and 11-2 and record was good enough to get them into the BCS playoffs, but they have a tough challenge with the LSU Tigers. Johnny Manziel, Johnny Football, and the Texas A&M Aggies, they're going to go to the Independence Bowl in Louisiana. That's the closest destination of the bowl games that are left. If they could have been ranked up a little higher, they maybe could have gotten that Armed Forces Bowl in their home state. Kansas State stole that one from them. Spartans and Aggies, and this will be the second time that the A&M Aggies have played in the Independence Bowl Stadium this season, so keep an eye out there. Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl, South Carolina versus the Texas Longhorns. Last year, the Texas Longhorn made an improbable run. They were 7-5, and five, and they ran all the way to the Final Four. A lot of people didn't think they deserved to be there with that poor record, and they proved they should. Let's see what happens this season. Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl, the inaugural one. Oklahoma taking on a whack team. I don't think Oklahoma has played a whack team since they played Boise State in the Fiesta Bowl. Could be wrong on that one. But Utah State, they put together a great season, and they should be rewarded with a chance to play for a national title, not have to go to some lame potato bowl to play in an exhibition game. Beefo Brady's Bowl, Florida State getting a home state bowl game. They select the Beefo Brady's Bowl for their matchup with Louisville. Should be a good one as Florida State, the ACC champs, going up against the Big East champions, the Louisville Cardinals, 11 and 2 against 10 and 2, number 12 versus number 21 in the Beefo Brady's Bowl. The Oregon State Beavers making their return to the BCS playoffs. They had a great season this year. They're going to get matched up with number 20, the uh, Northwestern Wildcats in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. So a short travel for the Beavers from Oregon over to Boise, Idaho. The Oregon Ducks took this bowl game last season. Speaking of I Boise, Idaho, it's going to be the Boise State Broncos traveling across country to the Military Bowl in Washington, D.C. with the Clemson Tigers, number 19, matching up with number 14. First ever matchup for Boise and Clemson. Boise State played Florida State the last two years in the BCS playoffs. They're getting quite familiar with these ACC teams. The NIU Huskies, they're going to get the Michigan Wolverines in the New Era Pinstripe Bowl at Yankee Stadium. This is, I believe, Michigan played in that bowl last season in our playoffs against Nebraska. Let's see if NIU, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of controversy about does this team deserve this, whatever. They'll get a chance to prove it on the field of play. Your final BCS playoff team, the lone remaining bowl was the Las Vegas Bowl. By default, it goes to Nebraska and UCLA. But for Nebraska, the last time they were in this bowl game was against the Nevada Wolfpack two years ago in the Las Vegas Bowl. They blew out Nevada, I believe, put up 56 points, ended up going all the way to the Final Four, so it could be 
good luck for them. So here's how your brackets will shape up for your 32-team playoff. Notre Dame, Arkansas State, Nebraska, UCLA, LSU, Kent State, Texas A&M, and San Jose State. So you got uh, two SEC teams in there, Pac-12 team, Big Ten team, an independent, a Sun Belt, a MAC team, and a WAC team. In the Alabama bracket, Alabama, Tulsa, NIU, Michigan, Georgia, Wisconsin, South Carolina, and Texas. So quite a few SEC teams here. You got three of them in this bracket, along with two Big Ten teams, Conference USA team, a MAC team, and a Big 12 team. So NIU got some fight ahead of them if they want to win this thing. Over in the Florida bracket, bracket, Florida, San Diego State, Clemson, Boise State, Stanford, Vandy, Oklahoma, and Utah State. So take a look at some of the possible matchups in round two. Could see Oklahoma, Stanford. Could see Utah State, Stanford. How about Boise State and Florida, San Diego State, and Boise State in a possible rematch. In the Oregon bra- bracket, the Ducks, the Bulldogs, the Beavers, the Wildcats, the Wildcats, the Bearcats, the Seminoles, and the Cardinals. Good uh, mix of teams here. And again, you can see Oregon, Oregon State as a possible second-round matchup. And uh, you, just all the possibilities in this BCS playoff. So much fun. It's a shame we don't get to enjoy it in real life. But I suppose virtual playoffs are just as fun course. NIT brackets will shape up like this. Rutgers gets their first pick. They're going to take the BBVA Compass Bowl in Birmingham, Alabama. They had some crazy travel last year for this tournament, but it didn't bother them one bit. Up next, Oklahoma State. They draw the Sun Devils of Arizona State, and it'll be the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas. So a short little travel kind of for both of these teams, for Arizona State and Oklahoma State getting to head to Reliance Stadium in Houston for this NIT playoff game. Not a part of the BCS playoffs, just a way to get some of these other bowls included and to get these teams some extra bowl game money. The uh, BYU and uh, Mississippi State will head to New Mexico to do battle in the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Number three versus number six in that battle. BYU was in the BCS playoffs last year with Robert Griffin III and made it to the second round before losing to Oregon. And your final NIT game, it's going to be TCU and uh, Southern Cal. Disappointing season for Southern Cal after being ranked number one, but interesting how this one uh, works out. The Christmas Bowl is a proposed bowl game to be played at the Los Angeles Coliseum that the NCAA said no to. TCU by default, by being the number four seed, they have to take the last remaining bowl. So even though they're higher ranked than USC, it's going to be at USC's home stadium. So that will be an interesting one to see how that works out. There you see your brackets, the NIT, second round bowl games, as you saw earlier, the Cure Bowl, another proposed bowl game that the NCAA said no to and the Ticket City Bowl, which I believe is now the heart of Dallas Bowl or some something, and then the title game is in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. So there you go. There's your BCS playoffs, your selection show. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy this fun little series that we're going to be doing here amongst all the other videos on this page. Again, just something to have fun with. I, I did my best to try to combine the polls, the bowls, and the playoffs all into one. Some people, everyone has their own idea what the playoffs should be. Should it be eight teams, 16 teams, four teams? Do you involve the bowls? Do you do it on campus? Everyone has their own opinion. Just have fun with it the way it is. It's a 32-team playoff, all neutral site because you know what? College basketball does neutral site. College baseball does neutral site games. High school football, once they get further on in the playoffs, do neutral site games. So everyone does neutral site games. This is just the way I want to do it, and I hope that everyone can enjoy it the way it is. I'm going to, again, do my best to get these rosters as accurate as possible using the depth charts on Rivals.com. If you can provide me with any more up-to-date or accurate websites that have these depth charts, please let me know. Other than that, I'm using Rivals.com, and whatever they give me is whatever I'm going with, and I'll adjust 
the uh, standings from there. So I hope you enjoyed it. The BCS playoff selection show. Some really exciting first round matchups that will sell out a lot of these bowl games. You'll watch the New Orleans Bowl in real life probably be th- uh, one fourth of the way filled. They never sell that thing out. If you had LSU playing in the New Orleans Bowl in a first round bowl game for the third consecutive year, that place would be sold out guaranteed. These bowl games are really missing out on a big opportunity to have these big name teams come in to sell out their stadiums and also have a chance for the schools like NIU, Kent State to get in there and prove themselves and say we should be able to win a national championship. So thanks for tuning into the selection show and uh over the next couple of weeks and months we'll be getting these uh episodes up one by one so thanks for tuning in and uh look out for the first bowl game i believe it'll be the beefo brady's bowl between florida state and louisville